What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm gonna try to shorten it down because we have a manual right here that has literally millions of pages. Well, not literally, but you know what I'm trying to say. So this right here is Geometric Future Model 2, the ARC, and it does look outstanding. I do have to say it looks really cool. Something completely different than we've seen before. The top part does resemble to that Deep Cools case, uh, the Quadro Stellar, but regardless of that, the case looks great. But that's not all. That's definitely not all, because to remove everything and to start building inside to place your components, you need to remove all the panels. So you have four of these, two of um, same design, two of the same size. So two here and two here, you have two brackets for three 120 millimeter. Well, we'll get to that part. I'm just mentioning what you need to remove. So four of these panels, two of those brackets and one of these shiny gloss white things right here. To remove those, you need to remove 20 screws and uh, then you can start building your PC. In those terms, we have loads of screws and if you're not that patient, you'll most likely lose interest in building inside this case. I don't like doing this, but I do have to give you guys some heads up before you even decide what to do. So let's start. Uh, the case has uh, four mesh panels, but even if they were solid panels or tempered glass panels, even though I doubt for the tempered glass to be bent as such, you have an openings on the side which really do create an outstanding airflow and I already done everything here as you can see this is the graphic card part and we have here three fans here the radiator for um, cooling the CPU and stuff like that so you do need to remove first these four panels after that you have to remove those two mounting brackets for the what's it called, the 4D fans and radiator mounting. And then you remove the gloss part. I know I already mentioned everything, but let's start from the beginning. After that, we can start placing the components inside. So placing the motherboard. It's really straightforward. You place it inside. That's all there is to it. There's nothing extra to it. And I tried, I really did try to avoid removing all the panels. For instance, I left one bracket for the fans to place the motherboard in. But then I realized during the whole process that you do need to remove it to place the radiator and the fans, stuff like that. When we're talking about the radiator and the fans, we have right here, this is Geometric Future Junior Eskimo Neon 36 White. And uh, I used additionally uh, 2505 White Squamac fans 3-in-1. So you have in both packages right here, you get a controller for your addressable RGB. And this is cool because then you don't need to connect everything to your motherboard if you don't have, for instance, addressable RGB header. But regardless of that, this one looks cool. These perfectly match with these fans because they're the same. And that's it. Everything that you see here on the table, apart from the accessories that I used inside the case to mounting the GPU, to mounting the power supply, well, I think I already said it. So, for instance, we have additional parts that can be used for ATX power supply or some additional ticker graphic cards because you can place a ticker graphic card right here and you can adjust the height of the motherboard as well, giving you a possibility to mount even longer graphic cards. But let's start with after you placed your motherboard, what happens then? You can either place your power supply or you can place your graphic card. Ideally, I would suggest placing your power supply because it says that right here in the manual. So you have multiple positions of the power supply depending on what you're using ATX or SFX. Uh, ATX goes, um, let's say, somewhat sideways here and uh, SFX goes sideways here horizontally towards your GPU. So you have two different mounting mechanisms and at first, because even though I was reading the manual, you don't get to the part of the SFX power supply immediately, you get first the ATX power supply installment. So I was kind of worried because I placed the bracket and it didn't collide with the holes and stuff like that, but I had to revert it. Regardless of that, that was my mistake for not reading two, three pages up on front. 
So we have a bracket that you have to place on your power supply. If you're going with SFX, it's reverted and you mount it with two additional screws on the uh, chassis directly. Then when you're done with it, here at the back, you have two additional screws to place another mounting plate to hold the power supply steady. That's it. So you have four screws to mounting the power supply. Nothing wrong here. We usually have four screws to mounting them in a regular case. And then we go with the graphic card. Now, the graphic card has something like this. This is a mounting bracket that you place first on your GPU before placing it inside the chassis. You do have to do this because you won't be able to mount the GPU inside. This is a bit strange because as you can see the holes right here that go into the chassis of the case can't be accessed with the regular screwdriver because this isn't straight. You have to bend it a bit and you have to have a longer screwdriver because this right here is around 12 centimeters I think and um, this is it. Uh, you place these top two screws on your graphic card. Then you have a mounting bracket directly on your graphic card. You mount the graphic card to your PCI slot. And I would definitely suggest to place it in a horizontal line so that the graphic card doesn't overload the PCI Express slot. Just in case. Nothing might happen, but just in case do that beforehand and then you have to have that longer screwdriver to place two screws inside the case through this opening right here so that's four additional screws we're already at 28 screws and okay regardless of those four for the power supply that's regular 24 and um, yeah i think it has loads of work but unfortunately that's not the end of the story now the good thing what I can say is since we have all the ports coming out from the this top side and you have all the openings here, you can access the motherboard not straight as you would expect, but still you can do it. They figured it out and gave us some ideas. So for instance, for the power supply, you have this connection right here. So this is an extender that you need to connect beforehand before placing the side panels, everything else push it out and you connect it right here. This is it. Next in line, we have um, a bit of a strange cable. It's a USB Type-C, inter USB 3.1 internal for your motherboard that goes out to USB Type-C. You use this, this is a NOAA Geo HB01 hub that you connect, let's see, PC. You have written here part that says PC, then you have microphone and headphone jack and you have three USB type A 10 gigabits per second and one USB type C 10 gigabits per second. You connect it and you have it on your table sitting as it is. It's a cool way to connect it because we don't have any ports right here. So the only connection right here at the top that you connect to your motherboard is the power on button which is right here on top. You connect it to your motherboard and the addressable RGB header. The addressable RGB header is only for the top part that lights depending on how you like it when we're talking about RGB. So what's else inside the box? We have loads of screws and we have um, a cloth to clean the gloss sides. We get uh, the display port angled 90 degrees, which is the first time I'm seeing and really big thumbs up for Geometric Future for this one, because usually when we get uh, compact case SFF build or whatever, you usually get angled HDMI, right? This is DisplayPort and that's really cool. And you get a mouse mat for whatever reason, but it's really cool addition. You don't usually get these and that's it. Uh, Velcro tie and of course more Velcro tie. Yeah, and the user guide, this is it. So building process, right? Let's go back to that just for a second. And the GPU fits perfectly. There's no obstruction. You can easily connect. I use the SFX uh, power supply from Cooler Master, the V1100. Uh, the cables are straight there. You're not having any issues when we're talking about connecting 24 pin to your motherboard, 8 pin EPS for your ITX board at the top, and of course the 12 VHPWR. Everything is perfect. I did something that uh, placing here the 360 radiator, you place the radiator from the outside, inside goes the fans, 
and then you just have to think about what you're going to do with 40 millimeters of tubes it's it's really easy it doesn't obstruct the gpu it doesn't go inside the fans everything is there the fans on the front right here are basically on the front part of the bracket which is still good don't get me wrong which is still good because then you have loads of space in the inner part to reroute the tubes and do everything including uh, the cables and stuff like that on front you can place uh, three 120 millimeter fans or two 140 that means also 360 water cooling radiator with the length of 399 millimeters the side the same configuration goes on the side as i did and uh, the top part you can mount 120 or 140 millimeter fan for additional exhaust there could have been a possibility to mount 120 or 140 at the bottom but the power supply covers it and this is where we go to the part where you don't have any legs you can't place it on the side because these panels stick out uh, from the gloss part at the bottom you don't have any legs to raise the chassis up a bit it would be really cool to have a possibility to mount it to place it on your desk in two varieties horizontal and vertical as such and would give us some diversity because definitely this front panel really looks outstanding and creating an airflow from the bottom to the top or from the front to the back it would be additional air cooling possibility which would be outstanding but even with this configuration you actually don't need it it will be just more like adding more fans and creating some additional airflow which wouldn't mean much the motherboard compatibility we have a matx and itx uh, possibility power supply vertical installation length uh, up to 180 millimeters and horizontal installation length is 160 millimeters we have loads of plastic and uh, we have steel chassis which is uh, one millimeter and 1.5 millimeter of thickness when we're talking about drive base you can either go 3.5 inch uh, or 2.5 inch with uh, one 2.5 inch CPU heatsink can go up to 172 millimeters and the maximum GPU length is 350 millimeters now here we go to the uh, ticklish part let's put it this way so you remember I mentioned that the radiator that goes from the outer side of the chassis and the, and the fans go in the inner part this creates a bit of a problem because the Eskimo Neon 360 white, even though it has dimensions 397 and they stated it's 399 millimeters, it actually does create a problem. And here's the thing, the white of the radiator can cause a problem in terms of placing either RAMs or placing the CPU block. You do all of that before placing the radiator on the chassis. So you place the CPU block on the CPU, you place the RAMs and then you mount the radiator and the fans to the mounting bracket and then the mounting bracket to your chassis. Of course you're going to push the radiator to the further side so it doesn't collide and doesn't touch the CPU block or the RAMs. But in this scenario and I think in most scenarios you can't go with a thinner radiator. But in this scenario what happens is when you do place the radiator and you want to close this part the radiator actually blocks it on the bottom so you can't do anything when we're talking about that so what i did is since you have two additional screws to mount that bracket you have to remove it as close as possible to the cpu block to be able to mount this uh, top back the radiator is touching the cpu block but it isn't touching the rams so if you go with any other radiator aio you can push the radiator a bit inside and then close this one properly so there's some things that should have been done a bit differently to give you uh, some more um, let's say ease of building but i have to say the design is outstanding the rgb lights here on top really create outstanding look shame it doesn't have some feet at the bottom or uh, on the side so you could lower it down you know you this is the position for the uh, motherboard and for the power supply you can mount it here on this side and still get an outstanding look if it's placing horizontally on your desk that will be outstanding gloss plus the mesh part is great creates uh, the mesh part creates uh, outstanding airflow the front fans are intake the radiator is exhaust you can reverse it it's all up to you but let's check out the thermals so aida 64 extreme edition system stability test after 30 minutes 
we got temperature on the CPU 76 degrees Celsius, which for AMD Ryzen 5 7600X is quite normal. But I was shocked that the clock speed in this scenario went up to 5425 megahertz, and this is on average. So this is outstanding and I expected a bit more when we we're talking about Cinebench, but we'll get to that part. The GPU went up to 76 degrees and with the panel or without the panel is the same thing. It goes a bit too high when we're talking about the airflow because it doesn't have any additional fan blowing cold air inside. Usually what we get is around 65 to 66 degrees and I don't know what's the reason here. These fans are blowing inside the GPU as well, giving some air and still it goes a bit too high. But regardless of that, I think we could manage something else. Reverting the fans here on the radiator to create an intake. These can create an exhaust and then we will have much better thermals where I think the GPU would even lower for six degrees. So yeah. But Cinebench R23, consistency, right? This is what we're after all the time and we got it right here as well. So 75 degrees Celsius throughout the whole 10 consecutive tests. The clock speed, and this is what I mentioned, is 5250 megahertz. So I did expect at least 5300, but I got 5250 throughout the whole 10 tests. And the benchmarking, well, the scores for Cinebench 14,594 was the maximum and it was actually the first one. And then we have some average of 14,570, which still is quite all right. And I have nothing to say. This is outstanding and altogether really great. I think this case has loads of potential. And don't get me wrong, the initial 20 screws are something that... You either get used to it or you build it once and you just leave it as it is. Or if you're building constantly like I do, this could get on your nerves a bit. But when you finish up the build and when you place the panel here as it goes, let's just do it like so. I'm not going to tie up the screw currently. Here we go. So if you do it like so and the build really does look outstanding, I have to admit it really does look outstanding. Shame. I'm really, I'm really not disappointed. It's not a negative thing. The thermals are okay for the CPU are great. The benchmarking scores are outstanding and that's that. Just the process, just the process is something that I didn't expect, honestly. I really like the case. I do have to say the visual aspect was outstanding. But when we take into consideration everything, the whole process has already stated, is something that you have to have some patience to build inside this one. Junior Eskimo Neon 36 White really does the job outstanding. The fans are quite actually combined with the AAO make a unificial, let's say, build when we're talking about the fans. And their other cases are outstanding as well. So yeah, that's everything that I can say. I know this is a mess, but I wanted to give you some heads up what you can expect inside the box. Cool stuff, cool addition. Maybe something is uh, over the board. The case, again, is outstanding when we're talking about visual aspect. Building process is a bit, an hour more than your usual building process. And that's all there is to it. Guys, uh, if you think this video deserves a sub or your attention for future content, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell. The links are down below if you desire to experiment on this case, you have the patience and you really want to go and uh, create something that looks outstanding, but uh, the process is something different. The links are below. Thanks for watching. See you very soon, guys. Bye-bye.